My name is Dr Kim McKee, I'm a co-investigator within the UK Collaborative Centre for Housing and Evidence and I'm a senior lecturer in social policy and housing at the University of Stirling. So this study is about generation rent. The UK census highlighted that over 40% of private renters were young people under the age of 35 and we were interested in finding more about inequality, inequalities facing this group of young people. So our study is involved qualitative interviews with young people under the age of 35 living in Scotland and England who are renting in the private sector. Um, and past research didn't really focus so much on the voices of low income groups, so that's something we decided to specifically focus on. And what we're really interested in was the more intangible um, emotional impacts facing generation rent and the way in which um, kind of frustrations in realising their aspirations may impact negatively on their well-being. I think there were a number of key take-home messages from our study. The first is that issues in the private rented sector uh, are having real serious negative impacts on the well-being of young people. Um, insecure, expensive, poor quality housing was linked to issues around depression, stress and anxiety for young people and for those on the lowest income also homelessness. Um, the experiences of, of young people um, that we encountered in our study um, a real sad reflection on housing in the UK today, I think, and raise serious questions about whether the private rented sector can really meet the needs of low-income groups in particular. The other key finding um, is that where people live really impacts upon their experiences of the private rented sector, and this is because tenancy rights and regulation vary in different parts of the UK. Recent reforms in Scotland have provided tenants with greater security of tenancy, more predictable rent increases, and there's also the possibility of, of rent regulation set on hotspot areas. We would really like to see these benefits extended to tenants across the UK. And so whilst we think there's a lot uh, the rest of the UK can learn from Scotland, we don't want to be complacent either. And concerns about affordability were also reported by Scottish tenants in our project. Uh, and so we think better data on, on private sector rents is really vital uh, going forward in Scotland and it would really help improve the effectiveness of the rent regulation measures contained in the recent uh, 2016 Act. Our study has a number of key implications. Firstly, I think it provides an important evidence base for the impact of the new private residential tenancy in Scotland and assessing the effectiveness of the rollout of that. And secondly, I think it feeds into the ongoing consultation on reform to the private rented sector in England. And an important contribution I think our study makes is about the debate regarding the end of the no-fault ground for possession. And I think our research shows that the short-term nature of tenancies has real negative impacts on tenants' well-being. Um, it undermines their ability to make a home, to put down roots in their, in their kind of place, in their community. Um, it's very expensive and stressful for tenants continually having to move home at short notice. Uh, and we'd really like to see this change and for England to follow the Scottish model of having open-ended tenancies. Finally, our report also indicates a need for better training amongst landlords and this could really help uh, improve poor practice, make them much more aware of their obligations to their tenants, but training would also be very helpful for, for tenants. Education could help them become much better informed about their rights and equip them with the kind of skills and confidence to enforce their rights as well and for us that's really important going forward.